Hello and welcome to Future Procurement. My name is Robert Freeman and today uh, it's a long-awaited episode where we will talk with Agnieszka Piątkowska. She's a headhunter from Poland. Hello, Agnieszka. Hello, hello, Robert. Agnieszka is a regional headhunter for Central and East Europe with over 13 years of experience in procurement and supply chain area for uh, big global organizations. Did I say it right, Agnieszka? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> you said it right. And uh, thank you very much uh, that you called me. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you today. <laughs> it's fantastic. As I said to you a little bit off the record that uh, I've got so many of the requests to uh, speak with uh, uh, headhunters or HR people who um, can give some career tips, some advice for job interviews, for moving towards uh, uh, higher steps in the career ladder uh, and uh, some maybe questions and answers, uh, some tips for interview and these kind of things. And I'm really, really happy that Agnieszka, you have uh, said okay to our interview today. <laughs> I'm very glad to, you know, to discuss with you. I'm very glad to share some part of my work uh, with the listeners. And I'm, 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 I'm really happy that uh, we have this opportunity because, in fact, I also see that there is a big need on the market from coming from procurement uh, professionals to uh, gather a little bit more information about job markets itself, about um, changing jobs, about interview skills, and also about managing the career path. Great. So I think that this, this, you know, this subject is quite quite hot <laughs> yeah, exactly. in a way. Exactly. We all learn how to work properly. What uh, what should we do, etc. But how to really um, uh, be a good. Uh, build a good career for yourself how to move forward and things like this which is very important but we <laughs> tend to be uh, sure. yeah, to not discuss it uh, really loudly so uh, i think this episode will be really really valuable for many <laughs> of our listeners great but uh, agnieszka before we move into this uh, tricky and uh, uh, difficult more difficult questions let's start with a little bit of introduction <laughs> of yourself can you say uh, who you are what you are doing today uh, and uh, uh, maybe a few words about your background. Sure, of course. Uh, well, I admit that this is quite unusual for me to be on the other side because <laughs> usually <laughs> it's me who is, you know, in interviewing others. Uh, so, uh, so right now I I really feel how it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> coming back to me, I'm a partner at Big Fish. And uh, Big Fish is an international recruitment company specialized in procurement area. Uh, our headquarters is in France, uh, and I'm running uh, the office in Poland. But we are operating on the Polish market and uh, CE market uh, since about right now almost 14 years. Okay. Uh, and we are working mainly for global production and services companies. We are not that much working with retail. And uh, I am running the, the office in here. And I'm also a hands-on headhunter uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of recruitment processes by myself. And on the other hand, my second, uh, I would say, career journey is a career coach. Uh, and career coaching. I was actually inspired to take this path by the candidates uh -huh. uh, with whom I'm working because in, in, in many cases they were calling me and asking a lot of questions about how to manage their career or if shall I decide upon this employer or maybe other employer and a lot of a lot of questions. So that kind of inspired me to to take a, a after graduate degree and to start this this career on my own. Uh, so I'm not only working with procurement professionals, but those guys actually inspired me. So coming back to procurement itself, I'm also quite engaged into procurement community here in Poland. For example, currently me and my colleagues, we are writing a procurement textbook, which shall be published uh, next year, hopefully. Uh, my role would be to basically um, write about career management in procurement. So uh, I'm thinking about a guy uh, kind of a solid guide for <laughs> uh, for the procurement professionals. So I really hope that they would uh, find it interesting. 
Uh, and also, uh, I'm cooperating with universities in my country and that provide postgraduate degrees in procurement because we have a few of them. Uh, and I'm actually giving a lecture on, on on career management in procurement purely, I would say. <laughs> wow. So, so specialized career management in procurement. Yes. Fantastic. Yes, yes. <laughs> having this kind of a, a strong background and having the wide view on the situation in the market today, what are the current needs in procure, for procurement professionals? Where are the gaps that you see today on the market? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, just to start, I would say that procurement function uh, in, here in Poland is not that widely recognized, sadly. Um, well, it's getting better since few years we have sort of uh, formal education in this area, as I mentioned to you, that we have this some postgraduate degrees. Um, uh, but there are still few of them. Uh, however, uh, the situation is improving because, for example, last year, one of the top Polish universities started a procurement specialization on the master degree. So it was uh, there were not too many people maybe at, at that moment, but a uh, few students, but still it, it gives a lot of hope, I would say. So I was, I was very happy to hear that. Um, when it comes to the job market itself, uh, the, the the market for procurement professionals, I mean, the need for procurement professionals is, is really rising on the market, on the Polish market. Um, actually, mainly due to the fact that uh, we have a lot of investments in shared service and uh, business process outsourcing centers. And there are more than thousand of them in Poland <laughs> and uh -huh. with uh, procurement functions in many of them. Uh, not all of them, but in many of them, there are procurement functions. Hmm. And the situation, in one hand, is very good for candidates. Um, um, but from the employer's perspective, it's quite difficult. Because <laughs> from the other, from, from one hand, there is over demand on the market for what I call junior procurement profiles, because these are profiles for uh, procure to pay function or yeah. uh, so called, you know, low dollar sourcing activity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the companies are looking for, for actually candidates with basic, really basic procurement process skills plus different languages capabilities. But the challenge is that due to the war for talents, I would call it, mm -hmm. and the companies are starting to pay kind of a skyrocketing salaries for for really you know basic capabilities plus languages. And on the other hand, um, the candidates that are having experience in, in 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 strategic category management, for example, they are kind of paid almost similar salaries as the one in the procure to pay area so mm -hmm. to be honest it's quite um, yeah it's quite unusual situation from from the last uh, from the last i would say five maybe years and but actually to summarize it the market is is very currently very very good uh, for the procurement professionals but i believe only talk, speaking about uh, shared services and BPO. So I believe that Poland will no longer be the perfect market for this kind of activities because the you know the the salaries will will be rising and and basically the cost will rise. So so I believe that at the end of the day, first of all, it will not be the best market. And on the other on the other hand, the um, I believe that uh, in the future we'll have more advanced systems that will be supporting P2P process and then we will no longer uh, need so many people in that area. Exactly. But, but except of BPOs, because I don't want to our listeners and you to think that Poland is only BPO and shared services <laughs> because it's not true. But except of this environment, there is uh, also what I see is that uh, the need for regional category managers or leaders is also picking up, uh, mm -hmm. especially in, 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 in direct procurement, direct. Uh, but also indirect procurement function is, is, is picking up as well um, because about, for example, 10 years ago, um, the, 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 the indirect uh, roles were quite rare yeah. on the market. Uh, and, and in many cases, they were connected with administration, you know. So and now um, service companies are putting a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot or 
or more attention on strategic indirect procurement. Uh, and also it is starting to pick up quite nicely in, in the production companies. Interesting. Very good analysis. And of course, uh, because our listeners are uh, from uh, many countries, from uh, including uh, Central and East Europe, where you are mm-hmm. uh, describing the situation in, in this region, but also from other regions of Europe, from North America, from uh, Brazil, we have many listeners from India, China. Right. And uh, uh, of course, the situation might be different in different countries. But uh, what I feel talking to um, different people from all these regions and to the questions that I received, that um, mm-hmm. exactly I like your uh, phrase, war for talents. And I think this, uh, this is still uh, the trend in, in the majority of places or for majority of the Uh, professionals that I was talking uh, to and of course if Mm -hmm. you are a good professional uh, then you will be needed it's like uh, if you are Cristiano Ronaldo was uh, (laughs) the the, the Portuguese guy was telling to me if you are Cristiano Ronaldo and your contract is being inspired very soon you don't worry very much because you are the best Mm. in the world so it's similar (laughs) similar here if if you are a super good professional and you are well known then uh, you will need Uh, not need to worry about your next position. But tell me uh, yeah. then and tell to our listeners, how can you become a uh, Cristiano Ronaldo in procurement field? How, what are the uh, soft and hard skills that uh, employers are looking uh, when they look for uh, procurement and supply chain professionals? Mm, I well, I can tell from my experience. Yes, so for like basing on 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 the recruitment processes that we manage, um, I would say that um, well, the skills are quite similar for 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 different positions. But for example, I when I was thinking about your question, I decided that I will I make some notes for that, and I decided that I will tell you what kind of skills do I see for strategic buyers, what kind of uh, skills I, I I see when it comes to the need of the market for procurement leaders and procure to pay uh, specialists. So. Uh, when it comes to strategic buyers or category leaders, uh, the the most important skills that um, uh, that our clients are kind of uh, interested in are the following. It's it's first of all it's strategic sourcing, uh, later followed by category management and category knowledge. Uh, so not only you know knowledge of the certain category, but also how to manage it strategically. Uh, what is also important is stakeholders management, suppliers le- relationship management, analytical skills, negotiation skills, um, very strong communication and relationship building skills, um, sometimes called uh, stakeholders engagement, uh, also problem solving and uh, the dealing with change and change introduction is picking up. <laughs> quite uh, strongly over last years, um, dealing with ambiguity as well. Mm. Uh, and yes, this is, this is an interesting, interesting skill, but really I think that it's, uh, it's important for the procurement professionals because you, well, you, it's never like that, that you have 100% of the information you need and sometimes, and, and, and somehow you need to manage it and somehow you have to move on and try to not mm. make a lot of mistakes, <laughs> I would mm. say. Um, as we also work with global and international companies, uh, fluent English is a must uh, and uh, in, 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 in many cases followed by some other Western European language. As a plus... Uh, in, in, in most cases as a plus when it comes to procure to pay function as a must as well. Um, so these were for, let's say, the, the skills that are needed for specialists. Uh, when, I, when it comes to procurement managers or leaders, uh, of course, all, uh, all above plus <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, leadership skills and um, also in, in, in some cases, um, including uh, leading virtual teams or project teams, uh, so basically being able to to lead uh, sometimes without a formal authority, which is a challenge. Um, also strategic agility and business acumen. This is very, very important, especially as business acumen, because um, 
and this is this is the skill that I really I would say I'm, I really encourage people to master. Hmm. Can, uh, can, because can I believe... you can you, sorry 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 can you not forget to stop on it or or maybe sure. we can elaborate a little bit now. No, I will tell you now. I I will tell you now. So oh, because the, this is really important. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, hmm. Uh, it's really important for the leaders and sometimes and I believe that it is also important when you are on the specialist level but you really want to make some impact um, uh, Robert you would be surprised um, <laughs> uh, like not so many people are really like good in uh, understanding how the business is working mm-hmm. and uh, and later on how the procurement function is supporting it Hmm. so uh, and this is (laughs) I mean in my opinion this is very important if you if you want to make an impact uh, in the role that you are in so the point is that um, I think that for example when I'm when I'm when I'm discussing with my um, students um, the career management uh, and we, there is a point that I'm making, and I'm, I'm asking them uh, what kind of uh, let's, what kind of um, indicators would you take into account when you would change the job? Uh, and okay, everybody they have their own um, desires, yes, and they have their own motivations. But I also ask them if they, um, once they are assessing, for example, two companies that they receive an offer, do they really make uh, you know an analysis of the business that these companies are in? Uh, and uh, I'm showing them a really very simple uh, analysis of. Uh, uh, so and not so many people understand it. So, for example, I'm 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 telling them, okay, if you are, for example, changing the job and you are going to another business, you have to see what is the condition of this business, what how the market looks like, if the company has a lot of competition or not, if uh, there is a, how this company is um, um, uh, how this company is rising, if they are acquiring other companies or they are building their own, you know, additional structure. Uh, what are the uh, law regulations in this area? What are the political risks in this area? What are the uh, technological, you know, risks or challenges in this area? And people really don't, you know, think about it that much, which is, and I think that this kind of analysis, you should be really, you should, you sh- you should know it and you should use it if you want to, um successfully manage vendors and uh, and and if you want if, if you you know if you want to be successful in setting up a category strategy for for your company you, you need to really understand the mechanisms yes mm-hmm. and this is what i <laughs> long story short let's say this is what i call you know business acumen to be to really understand the market uh, one of my one of my great clients, um, when we were recruiting category leaders for them on the region, they were asking how, for example, the raw materials prices are impacting the uh, the category that, uh, for example, one person was managing. Yes, and uh, what were the trends in this raw material? It, 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 it actually it was about um, direct materials. Yes. But they were asking this kind of questions uh, so that uh, to see if the person understands the basic mechanism on the on the in the economy. Yes. And if somebody didn't understand it, then they they said that it, it, it's not it's not a, a level of the position for this person. I don't know if I made myself clear, but, yeah. but I hope that... But this, that is a, is. this is exactly what I mean, and this is the biggest um, challenge for me. I was also making not one interview, but uh, mm-hmm. for me, the biggest challenge was how can you judge from such a short time that you have in discussion with your potential candidate, uh, how can you judge his or her view on the... Uh, you said dealing with a change, for example, or this business acumen. What, mm-hmm. Is it? Can you judge it just by asking him or her the questions, or 
um, by some yes. written things or what well, what is the hint here how do how can you judge this uh, of course you know it's uh, uh, interview is never like the you know the best method i would say it's it's a method yes it's it's quite good method but it's uh, it's not always the best method however for this type of uh, capabilities it's it's not that difficult to judge yes because it's it, it's it's just uh, a matter of asking right questions and um, maybe not being satisfied with the first answer uh, it's not like interrogation that i'm i'm talking about it's more like um, i would say asking some additional questions to the first question that i ask well i will tell you about uh, you know let's say the uh, the the examples of the questions that i'm asking you maybe uh, that i'm asking over the interview maybe later and if you want we can i don't know make a simulation so you can ask me okay so what would be the best answer and i can tell you what what i'm looking for into that questions but um as i mentioned to you my actually job is asking right questions this is number one in my job asking right questions and building good relationship <laughs> this is to two things that I, I, I need to do in order to be successful. So you can do it. I mean, uh, if you asked me about how to judge uh, somebody's change management capability, it's uh, I can ask the question, tell me about the change that you needed to introduce lately. Yes, right. it's an open question. The person is telling me the story and then I'm asking additional information. For example, how do you think the other people felt? What were the the biggest challenges? If you were about to repeat this exercise, what would you do differently? Um, what kind of skills do you think you should maybe improve? Think, thinking again about mm. this exercise, uh, what would you do differently? Yes, or what do you believe that you were successful in? What uh, what what were the surprises over this time? If you yes, or you can ask, for example, if if you would uh, if if for example if you would advise somebody else uh, to lead the change, what kind of you know on what kind of um, what kind of advice would you give actually how to lead the change successfully in your opinion yes so you can ask probably 50 questions about the change management yes right. um it depends on the answer and on the quality of answer of the person uh, because sometimes i believe that people are very good at what they do but they cannot mm, tell it or explain it precisely so my role is to actually uh, not to be, you know, not to put a lot of stress on them, but to listen to them very carefully and to ask some, I mean, helpful questions so that I could get down to the, you know, to the real thing. And then I can say, OK, more or less I can judge his change management skills from one to, mm. to ten. It is, in my opinion, it's about six. Yes. Something like that. I like of it. course. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. And this, what you said, is really, really powerful. That uh, go a few levels deeper than just the first answer. I, I remember now my uh, first interviews. I was writing down, uh, it was not PowerPoint or something, but I was writing down on the piece of paper all these uh, answers with because I know more or less what the HRs were uh, asking and mm -hmm. uh, I try to make these stories uh, sound great and everything but the biggest challenge that I had I remember was exactly when it was some extra question and you're like wow oops <laughs> <laughs> now now it's for real now I need so the the biggest maybe advice from what you have just said is like when you are preparing for the interview uh, go a little bit deeper in your example so don't only learn this pitch where you uh, describe the the business case where you have done something good, but also reflect on it. Think a little bit deeper about mm. uh, exactly what were the uh, triggers, is it uh, what was the motivation, what was the outcome, what exactly like you said also how the uh, other people felt in it, what were the KPIs uh, ex and, and things <laughs> like this. So go around. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, good. Good advice that you said. Go <laughs> so for, as an interviewer, you said that you ask the deeper or few levels deeper, right? So yeah. you go around the topic from different angles. 
to really understand the person better. Yeah, and to, as, is, and then from this the, is the only way to go, you know, to really do it properly. Yeah. So the advice for listeners probably would be to think about the things you give an, uh, an example in the, also from yeah. different uh, angles, from different aspects. Well, it's also, you know, good to, to, to actually have a simulation of the interview. I'll, I, I, I deeply recommend it. <laughs> I deeply recommend uh-huh. it. And, and there are really possibilities to prepare yourself better and uh, basing on the job description, gathering some information about the company, maybe from the people who are working in the company. There, there is a lot of things you can do to prepare better for the interview, really. And most of the people are not doing it. Uh, and many people have luck to receive the job, <laughs> to be honest. Um, uh, but uh, on the other hand, some some people are really lucky to receive a job uh, they don't deserve. Which I know, I know it it sounds quite cruel, but this is how it is sometimes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I think it's good uh, what you said as well. And I don't know if it's a good thing even for a candidate if he or she receives the job set. <laughs> that is, I, I don't know. It depends. How, how do you feel depends. about it? Maybe, maybe it's good to to stretch up a little bit, or? Mm, I think uh, that, uh, you know, you are never 100% ready for the new job. It's, it's never like that. Oh. Uh, and if, even if you are promoted, you are not ready. So it's, it's always like that, that there is uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, trust put in you <laughs> oh. and it depends on how you will you know how you will go about it uh, I would say that uh, well it's important to be open to, to for learning it's important to uh, uh, I would say um, put the best practices you've already mm-hmm. worked on into the new environment and I think it's uh, overall it's a good thing to 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 actually you know start the job that you're not fully ready for, uh, but uh, it also depends on your attitude and also it depends a little bit on how you tackle things. You know, if you are um, if you are more or less uh, interested in, in in challenges or or you are, you you like to play it safe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, not everybody wants to change jo- jobs, and probably each of us have some friends or colleagues who are working uh, many years in the same position and feel super happy. About sure, it, so. sure, sure. It depends on really how do you see your career and what is it important for you or not. Or it's it's a lot of it's a very complex subject in my opinion, and it's difficult to judge and to say you know overall it looks like this mm-hmm. or it looks like that, and it it is actually it, it it's it's the same for everybody. Actually, not it's not like that. Mm. Agnieszka, moving on then, and uh, yeah. coming back to the question about the interview <laughs> and uh, procurement or supply chain candidate interview um, so imagine if there is a interview that you are having for uh, let's say procurement management position and mm-hmm. uh, you are interviewing a person can you uh, say maybe step by step or maybe describe the typical interview how it looks like what are uh, the good examples of interview questions and answers that you give to uh, this kind of position Sure, of course. Uh, so, um, first of all, um, before I start to interview, we really do a lot of, I would say, work uh, with the client because, uh, firstly, what we need to know is to really understand the client needs uh, and, uh, more important, the, how the procurement function is organized and uh, what is today and what is the dream, let's say. So uh, so what is the current situation and, and what are the KPIs for this person and also for, oh. for the whole function and how this is organized, the reporting lines, this is, this is quite important. And also the um, we would like to understand uh, what, what kind of value is currently generated by the function and what uh, what kind of value do they actually expect 
uh, and also, if possible, to, to to understand the business itself, the strategy of the business itself, and also the the, the challenges, the supply base, and 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 what is the most important? Why this position is is ready <laughs> to be filled in? Yeah. Ah. So once we have it, then of course we are ha- hunting for the candidates, and let's say we are having the candidates, the, uh, and we are starting to in interviewing them. So the most important important for me is to also to first of all we are giving a lot of information about the function and about the information that we gathered from the client to the candidate so that he could he or she could really understand the environment uh, because you know uh, there are <laughs> so many companies and so many different procurement functions and what is more important they are not all the same meaning they are not uh, all the same in terms of maturity of the function uh, and this is quite important so I, I would like that the most important for me is that the candidate first of all understands what is this role about uh, and once we start the interview I'm asking if this person has any questions yes uh, and uh, I would like to, before we really start the interview, I would like to have an uh, open discussion uh, so that we would understand each other if this is the position that he or she is willing to to take. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> yes, because... So the first you know, <laughs> question is, do you have any questions? <laughs> yes, this is the first question. Fantastic. And uh, hopefully, in, in many cases, I, I receive a questions and I'm always very glad for that because, to be honest, it is quite important for me as I see if this person is taking this seriously, is it something, is, is this position... Um, well, interesting for him or her to, you know, dig into the additional information that I send, because we always send, except of this job description, we are sending additional information. So this is kind of, you know, I I, I can I can tell if, if if I'm receiving interesting questions, then I see that, okay, this person is, is yeah, there is a, you know, there is a, a, a hope that this person will be interested in. <laughs> Mm-hmm. in this job uh, so so this is the first question then I over the whole interview I'm really interested in going through the um, the, the career um, I'm focusing mostly on the positions that are the closest to the position that my client is looking for so if it's a procurement leader then I would firstly discuss this kind of positions uh, and I would like to, uh, of course, as well understand how these procurement functions were organized uh, in the different companies uh, in which the candidate work, uh, to whom he or she reported and whom reported to her him, uh, and how the work was divided. If there was, you know, if there was procure to pay process and category management, if this, if there was a division on that, or for example, there were strategic buyers, tactical buyers and uh, operational buyers, or only strategic buyers, how how this how this actually worked, yes? Uh, then I would like to ask about the KPIs, uh, and not only KPIs, but exactly the ways how this candidate achieved them. Mm. What was the, you know, for example, if, because you can have a lot of KPIs, um, many of them are, of course, savings. So let's say somebody told me that uh, my KPI was 4% year-to-year savings, and I'm asking, okay, how did you do it? Okay, what what were mm-hmm. the the steps you took what kind of uh, what kind of projects you maybe introduced in the company in order to gather that i want to really also understand the supply base and the market the candidate was working on so first of all what kind of business you worked for tell me a little bit about it tell me about the supply market on that business tell me about your major categories what kind of categories you think the most challenging, why they were challenging, uh, what were the most challenging um, situations with suppliers, what were the major risks, for example, with suppliers, how did you go about those risks, give me some examples about those uh, situations. Also, uh, of course, I... 
I like to ask one of the questions about stakeholders management skills. Uh, this is one of, let's say, maybe not my favorite, but one of one of uh, one of the interesting ones in my opinion. So the question is like that: rate your stakeholders management skills from one to ten, and mm. provide me with an example that supports your choice. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, so yeah. Or for example, later we can go. What could you do to improve your stakeholders management skills? Yes. Okay. These are maybe not the leadership uh, as a such, but these are the questions that I really need to ask because I need to judge if the person has a good sourcing background, sourcing you know, sourcing tools, sourcing capabilities and stuff like that. So this is something that I really need to check because on my market. You would be surprised, but there are, there are many candidates who are uh, who are on the management positions, but still they have a lot of skills gaps in 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 strategic sourcing, for example. So, mm. you know, I really need to check that one. And once I'm, I will check this once, and and once I will go through many other questions that I can tell you later another examples or I can also send you the the link for the questions that we have on on our web page because actually uh, we are we are um, uh, quite open with with the interview I uh, designed uh, something like 30 questions for the specialists level and another 15 for leaders and I put it on the web page and everybody can see it everybody can you know prepare for that I have nothing to hide, so uh, so I will I will be you know very happy to share it with you and the listeners uh, because um, I think it's uh, the the more somebody would prepare the better for me. Exactly, uh, it's very good, and uh, we will attach uh, for sure these questions to the show notes. Find it in the show <laughs> notes uh, wherever you listen our podcast, and uh, it, it's really good what you said. I like it that. Uh, this kind of surprising questions or something, this is something that people don't really like and this yeah. is something that probably people are afraid coming to the interviews and this is an additional stress factor for those people who are kind of uh, afraid of such uh, yes. kind of stress. But uh, what you said in the very beginning that you also dig few levels deeper. So even yes. if the person <laughs> prepares good, I mean, still you will be able to judge during the uh, these additional questions or asking about, uh, you know, different angles, what you said uh, on the same topic. You will be able to, to dig deeper and understand deeper what person really meant. So it's, it's very good what yes. you said. Even if you send the questions in advance, it still can be good. So it's also a hint for people hiring uh, procurement professionals. Don't be afraid to send the questions in advance. Of course, of course. And um, uh, on the other hand, Robert, you would be also surprised how not too many people are <laughs> are reading these questions and really preparing <laughs> the mm. answers. Interesting. So, yeah, that's that's interesting, but it's uh, that's It true. also says something. It also <laughs> says something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it also says something. But um also I would like to say that um as mentioned early on, I Mm, I know that interview uh, is a big stress for everybody. Uh, of course, maybe not for me that much, but still, uh, to be honest, Robert, after this kind of interviews, I'm really focused listening the person. So uh, the interview that I'm conducting are about an hour and a half, more or less. Afterwards, I'm quite tired, to be honest. It's not like that, that everybody has uh, the greatest communication skills. Of course, I believe that interview and is, 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 the one, one, is the one of the biggest tests of your communication skills. But sometimes if you are not feeling aware of the interview, um, it's... Uh, well, I don't want to judge somebody because he made some, you know, some little communication mis mistakes over the interview. This is, I'm, I'm really like, my target is to give as much comfort as possible over the, the course of interview so that the person really opens up and we can still discuss the challenge that the client is, uh, you know, providing. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So it's, uh, I think it's, it's, it's the best thing is to, to be open, uh, you know, like the candidate and, and, and the headhunter, of course, to see if there is a match, if, if, if really, uh, you know, uh, there is a high potential of the skills match. So this is important. So, so, and on the other hand, if the candidate really knows um, or is convinced to, uh, to, 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 to to start to work for my client because uh, remember that as a headhunter I'm giving the, the guarantee for the candidates <laughs> so if the candidate would leave uh, the, my client within let's say three months then I'm still having the, the problem is coming back to me so I need to hire another candidate and this is not something that I really like to do and to be honest, uh, I think that our approach, like to you know, this open approach towards interview, towards what the candidate, towards what the client is actually offering, what are the challenges, um, I think it pays back because we, I remember that we had only one over this 14 years, we had only one situation when we needed to find another candidate for for the position mm. because he left. So I believe in, in being open, you know, about the challenge, about the employer and about, uh, and also I, I really enjoy if the, you know, candidates are, are, are showing the trust as well and sharing the, the information, the skills and even the, because even the, the I would say the, the questions that they have or, or or you know the the concerns that they have concerning the when it comes to the, to the new employer. Uh, <laughs> one of our last questions, actually, that uh, that I prepared here. Um, can you share with our listeners what can they do uh, to uh, prepare better for a job change, and are there any areas where procurement professionals can uh, work today or within the nearest future if they plan the uh, job change? Sure, sure, of course. Um, definitely, uh, I think that um, first, uh, what uh, you need to know is where you're heading, actually, before you make a decision to change jobs. So this is quite mm. important. Good. So I would recommend to think about um, kind of positions that you are interested in, um, kind of organizations that you would like to work. For example, if they are big, small, medium, global, international, kind of business that you would like to work in. Um, also, the procurement structure, if it could be, should be, I don't know, local, global, international, matrix one. Um, um, also, the cut categories that you would like to manage when when we when we talk about let's say strategic buyers buyers and 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 uh, category leaders um, how how much do you wish to earn uh, what kind of company culture you work best this is quite important because um, sometimes we don't even understand how the company culture is impacting our behavior and our well-being in a way. Um, also, it's important to think about what, what motivates you at this job um, and what kind of skills you would like to master at, at the new position. Uh, the last question you should ask yourself is uh, why would you like to change? I mean, what, what do you lack at the current position that you would like to find in the new one? And I think that this this kind of questions you can also, um, you might also hear on the job interview. And then once you know where you're heading, then it is also good to uh, be more prepared to take an action. So that means that you should have your CV updated and actually ready to send. Uh, you should have your LinkedIn profile updated as well. It would be good if you would build a list of companies that you wish to work for. Um, I would recommend also to identify the headhunters or recruitment agencies that are working in the field. So supply chain, operations, procurement. Uh, then contact your network and inform them that you are starting to look for the new position. Uh, register on job boards, sub subscribe to job alerts. Um, then practice the communication during the interview. So as I mentioned that you may use also the career coach or you, you may uh, try to discuss it with a friend or a family member just, just to, uh, you know, have uh, a little bit more, 
well, to be a little bit more prepared. Um, it would be good also to join the procurement association to enlarge your network and yeah. uh, to be in line with current trends. Uh, and the last thing that I really recommend is to have an uh, an emergency budget hmm. because you know some jobs changes are smooth, some are not, uh, and sometimes we may end up in a role that we really don't like and we have to change again. Uh, and uh, I think that if if you have something like an emergency budget that basically keeps you you know alive for a few months, like six months or so something, then you your your pressure you know you you don't you can manage your pressure better and and uh, also it's 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 I think it's good to ask yourself one question: if you would lose your job today, how long? <laughs> can you you know manage without a regular income yeah so this is maybe for the ones that are um, in need to change a job quite yeah. heavily so 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 you know having this emergency budget i mean it's always too good to have this kind of emergency budget because you never know what will happen great advice really really great advice and of course <laughs> um I think also if you can share this um, advice in some sort of uh, maybe a few steps or a few preparation points would be also great. So we can also add them to the show notes of this podcast. Of course. Uh, Agnieszka, <laughs> we are really, really moving close to the end of this uh, podcast. And wow, it time flies really. Yeah. And, uh, Unfortunately, I have so many more questions to ask. I was thinking about asking you questions related to the salary discussions. I thought about to talk with you about this, uh, like more in details about the interview questions. But unfortunately, we don't have time. We are uh, already uh, longer than average episode of our podcast. So uh, now a little bit provoking you, Agnieszka, and asking for mm -hmm. maybe additional session with you. If, sure. If sure, it's possible. <laughs> Because I, I will not manage to, to uh, use the budget of our uh, time uh, to ask all of these questions. And for sure, sure. there. So I think, I think uh, we need to wait for one more interview with Agnieszka Piątkowska <laughs> in a future procurement podcast, if you don't mind, Agnieszka. No, I don't. Thank you, Robert. You know, I have an impression that I'm talking too much. So I... <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> very, very valuable uh, point. So I would... I would not interrupt you if I can, but uh, we have the limited budget of time, so we need to uh, round up on this point. And uh, I will remind to our listeners that uh, today, together with us, with her fantastic advice and really practical tips for all of us, it was Agnieszka Piątkowska, who is uh, giving really, really great advice for all of us. So it was a great pleasure to share my thoughts with you and the listeners, and uh, I hope they they liked it and uh, and um, in case you would like to continue then just you know call me and I will, will be really looking forward to that thank you once again dear listeners I will remind you to download the frequently asked interview questions for procurement professionals go to the show notes and download them I have left also the contacts to Agnieszka Piątkowska fantastic interview I really enjoyed it don't forget to comment, ask questions, send us uh, your email. My name is Robert Freeman and this was Future Procurement. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>